भगवत गीता चैप्टर टू वर्सेस थर्टी वन एंड थर्टी टू वेदिक स्क्रिप्चर्स डिफाइन ड्यूटीज एट वेरियस लेवल्स नाउ इट इज राइट टू से दैट यू आर द सोल बट आर यू रियलाइजिंग दैट नॉलेज एट प्रेजेंट यू आर लिविंग योर लाइफ एट द बॉडली प्लेटफॉर्म सो अकॉर्डिंगली वॉट इज योर स्वधर्म भगवत गीता श्लोका चैंटिंग इज फॉलोड बाई ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय स्वामी मुकुंदानंदा स्वधर्मापीक्ष नविकुमसी धर्म्याुद्धाश्रेयोत क्षत्रिय न विद्यते यदृछया चोपन्न स्वर्गद्वारृत सुखिन क्षत्रिया पार्थ लभंते युद्धमीदृश Besides considering your duty as a warrior you should not waver indeed for a warrior there is no better engagement than fighting for upholding righteousness o part happy are the warriors to whom such opportunities to defend righteousness come unsought opening for them the stairway to the celestial abodes he says if you consider your swadharma then also it is important for you to fulfill your duty here and fight what is swadharma our intrinsic duties in life you know this word dharma really doesn't have any proper english translation to it these are the difficulties when translating concepts so sanskrit hindi are highly evolved the languages when it comes to expressing spirituality english is highly evolved in literature so this word dharma is our natural duties in life and swadharma means our own based upon our situation so swa means the self whatever are the duties of the self is your swadharma so what is the self he has just explained the self is not the body it is the soul So truly the swadharma of all living beings is the dharma of the soul. What is the dharma of the soul? To love and surrender to its anshi, what it is a part of which is God. The soul is a tiny part of God, its dharma is to love God. with its entirety of its being and serve him in loving devotion this is also called par dharm savai pumsam paro dharmo yato bhaktir dhokshaje ahaitakya vyavahita yayatma samprasidati the shrimad bhagavatam states savai pumsam paro dharmo your spiritual dharm your spiritual religion or the incumbent duties upon you is to love god that is what all the saints have said 
Jesus Christ said it. The first and foremost commandment because he gave so many instructions. So his disciples asked, what is your most important instruction? He said, the first and foremost commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy might and all thy soul. That is the first and most important command. To love God. That is the spiritual dharma. It's called Paradharm, Bhagavad Dharm. But then, what do people do who are not interested in God realization? What is the injunction for them? 95% of society is not interested in God realization. It's only a few people like yourself who come on on a Wednesday evening to hear one Swamiji with a beard. The others would think you are crazy. So most of society is turned towards the world. How do I enjoy the world? How do I accumulate the world? How do I enhance my worldly attainments? It's these few souls who are turned towards God. So if you tell them you love God with all your heart and all your might and all your soul, they'll say, no, I'm sorry. Does not apply to us. So what's the injunction for them? Now that is where this Vedic scriptures give injunctions at all platforms. Creating this amazingly complex system which also makes it difficult to understand. Because while here there is one injunction, here there are multiple injunctions. So people become confused, what is this Hindu system all about? The Mahabharat says one thing, the Bhagavad Gita says another, the Bhagavad says a third thing. The Mahabharat says Karm Dharm, Gita says Karm Yog, Bhagavad says Karm Sanyas. Are they fighting with each other? No. It's just that there are different injunctions for different levels of souls. That is why these scriptures are not in chaos or not in a mess. They need to be understood in the proper manner. Hence the scriptures themselves say, you understand us through a guru. Or you will become confused. Shruti Puran Bahu Kaheu Upai Chutana Adhika Adhika Urujhai. You will say, What is this? The Bhagavat says Sri Krishna is the Supreme God. The Devi Bhagavat says Mother Durga is the ultimate authority. Vishnu Puran says the final tattva is Lord Vishnu. Skand Puran says there is no one higher than Skand Kartikeya. And the Shiv Puran says everything has emanated from Shiv. And all of them have been written by one, Ved Vyas. Is Ved Vyas mad or am I mad? You see, I am normal, Ved Vyas must be insane. Absolutely not. He is an empowered dissension of God. He has written everything for a meaning and purpose. But we need to have that spiritual evolution to understand it. Even Swami Vivekananda had said, What I have done will need another Vivekananda to understand. And we people go, we will understand through our narrow perspectives. So, these Vedic scriptures define duties at various levels. Now, it is right to say that you are the soul. But are you realizing that knowledge? At present, you are living your life at the bodily platform. You can't just pick out this knowledge, I am the soul, all right, now don't take care of the body, I am the soul. So don't bother about what you eat and drink, doesn't matter. That will not work. 
because you are not at the soul platform as yet you are at the bodily platform you have to move from here to the platform of self realization so for right now you will have to take proper care of your body no view spiritualists say you know no 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 that now forget about doesn't matter eating etc many enthusiastic new fight spiritualists they ignore they give up eating too much but that will also not do sharira madhyam khalu dharma sadhanam even to go towards the spiritual goal the body is your vehicle in life take good care of it if the body doesn't function properly then even though you desire spiritual enlightenment you will not be able to do it because each time you sit the mind will be diverted the pain in my throat and the pain in my head and the pain in my stomach and the pain in my foot so that one mind if it gets filled with pain how will you remember god if the body is not well you are not even able to love the world the wife asks the husband how much do you love me the husband says don't talk my head is paining oh ho oh, i am asking you a simple question why can't you answer i am saying how much do you love me why are you eating my head i am telling you my head is paining now at that moment he doesn't even like his wife because his mind is filled with the pain in his head so the world we love so much even that has become detestable and god we love so little as yet how will we bring him to the mind that is why even though we are the soul the eternal soul we have to take care of our temporary body even though you are not the car in which you drive to office it gets you to the goal so you take good care of it so that it doesn't break down halfway even a spiritual practitioner needs to utilize material science to maintain the body so similarly what our duties are in life these are also defined at two distinct levels to simplify the matter one is at the bodily level and the other is at the soul level now at the soul level like i said there is just one duty which is to love god but at the bodily level where 95% or even more of society is we have our distinct duties in life born of the propensities of our own intrinsic nature all of us have our intrinsic nature mixture of sattva gun raja gun tamo gun the sanskars tendencies carried forward from past lives our situation in this life etc so accordingly the vedas have defined different duties if you are a teacher if you have got a brahmanical nature then these will be your duties if your natural propensity is to be a businessman all right be a businessman but then these should be your duties and if your natural propensity is to administer all right well and good but then you must live by these codes of conduct now those duties those natures of our are pushing us from within shri krishna tells arjun by nature you are a warrior it will do no good to run away from your nature you think this is too detestable let me go and live in the jungle as a sanyasi or go in the himalayas and meditate it will not work arjun 
it doesn't it's not in tune with your nature you will go into the jungle there also you will collect some adivasis and become their king you will become a tribal king you cannot avoid your nature so all of us have a, our own nature and to work in accordance with that nature is the real dharma that is why those people who find the proper profession career getting the right kind of job is like getting the right kind of wife or husband it makes your life blissful if you have the proper job so arjun by nature is a warrior now a person whatever dharma or duties that person is doing if the opportunity arises to do these duties for a good cause nothing can be better than that shri krishna says arjun by duty you are a warrior your nature your job is to be chivalrous brave uphold dharma protect society if you get this opportunity out here to fight this righteous war this is a real blessing for you there will be no loss by doing one's duty now these are the material duties being a warrior is not a spiritual duty it's a material duty doing your material duty you will win pious merits and the result of winning these pious merits either you will get material opulences or you will go to heaven you will go to the celestial abodes and in the celestial abodes there is even greater facility for material enjoyment so shri krishna is speaking to arjun now at that material level you see the bhagavad gita goes transits from one stage to the other to the other right now he is telling arjun one thing at the end of the bhagavad gita he will tell him an even higher thing so out here what he is saying that your duty as a warrior is to fight on the side of righteousness go ahead and do it be brave 